This is a Dearborn. I built this three-point A-frame. It had the pins down here already for the three-point, but if there was a special right-angle drive that goes on the back of the four tractors that had a pin on it that the factory A-frame is supposed to hinge down and hook onto that pin. I didn't have any of that stuff, you know, and I didn't know it at the time, but at any rate, I just converted it for the use on the back of a three-point rig. But what we're going to do today, well, we're going to take a step backwards and make this a stationary rig, and this will remain a three-point accessory, so we're not really making, affecting any change at all to the... Uh, to the three point system the three point system that we've got going on here we're going to make it where we can use a different power source So this is going to be pinned to the ground. You just adjust the tractor to maintain your belt tension and spacing for the machine you're operating. Now this one here, this is so old, this one here doesn't even have the uh, hog ring type clips. So we're going to cut that and we're going to put our own hog ring connector in there. What I'm doing now, I'm just prepping the ends of this belt. I'm hoping the lacing tool will do a good enough job on this old belt material. I like to bevel that just a little bit. These here aren't uh, necessarily antiques. They're fairly, fairly modern. This right here is a pretty much a standard for most farm equipment. Once you got them in there, yeah, you have to install the pin. The pin will hold everything in place. Different schools of thought. Some guys say that you can just cut this down the middle and leave it in place or physically remove that cardboard. You do what you got to do to make it uh, as good as what you can get. Sometimes I have real good luck, sometimes I don't have very good luck at all. But the main thing is you got to get a good square cut on your belt and make sure that goes in squarely all the way down to the bottom of your lacing tool. Then you can start tightening up your vise. And hopefully you got it crimped enough. If not, you got to do it again. I'd say that's a pretty good job. Now I'll trim this off a little bit here. Here's old shop dog Layla. She got a haircut. Isn't she funny looking? When I went in the house, I got to thinking how weak these things really are. They're just really made to be a little pedestal for whenever you unhook the saw rig. It's not made to sustain any uh, pressure or anything like that. So I've decided that because there's got to be so much pressure put on this by the tractor to tighten up the belt as this is stobbed into the ground, we better have a, a removable, more permanent fixture for the front of this so we can actually put the pressure going to be required to hold that belt tension tight. If you wonder why I got Layla on the leash, uh, Layla had a little accident out here in the shop here a little while ago and she had to spend five weeks in a cone while a big old gash about four and a half inches long healed in her flank. So until she's totally back to normal, I'm trying to uh, keep her a little bit more under control. going to have to make this to where two bolts will have to assemble the right side of it. And you can see the harder we pull with the tractor to tighten up that flat belt on it, it's just going to pull into the ground and it's not going to, uh, to slip or slide. But anyway, that's the direction we're going. Don't know how it's going to end up, but that's what uh, the intention is. I would say it's not too bad for the first attempt. I'm going to drill a hole right through the center of this part we just bent. That'll be one of the two bolts that comes apart. And the other side should be reasonably close to the same angle. It's bolted together. It seems to be fairly sturdy. I'll be having a 2,800 pound tractor leaning against it, you know, tightening up the belt. So I'm going to drive some pins down in the ground right here and 
here and here. Maybe two of them on the back side. Now all I had was that really, really, really old belt. That old belt is really dried and it's got a lot of kinks and stuff in it. But uh, I'm going to try to stretch it out and get her a little bit warm. Maybe even let it slip a little bit to warm up and get a little belt dressing on it. Okay, now I took and strung the belt out. I don't have the belt assembled yet because I have to determine what height this thing's going to have to run at. We're just going to do a dry run. This, this could get a little entertaining right now. This old flat belt is ancient. It's been set in a circle or bundled up in a pile for so long before I got it that it's, uh, it's really hard and stiff. So it might flop and jump. It's going to take a little while to, if we can ever get it, to smooth out and work and run real good. Now you can see right here the angle that this tractor is setting. It's actually going up a slight incline and I just pressed the, the little incline and it's going down over here. So that's why I decided way back whenever I started figuring on building this little uh, adapter here, it needed to have different levels that we could set that at simply because, and this is the most important point right here, see the belt guard right here? We needed to make sure that that belt would do it around and then return back to that direction there. We're going to uh, put it in gear and just let it run in and kind of uh, stretch the belt. Uh, maybe it'll settle down, I don't know. Like I say, that's an extremely old belt. And uh, you're, what you're going to see, you're going to see um, something that's going to make some people scream and holler, I bet. But we're going to put some belt dressing on this belt. I've heard all the horror stories and everything, but I've been around these my whole life. This is really, really old. This actually come from Sears and Roebuck probably in the 50s, you know. It's one of my last tubes. I still got a couple of other partial tubes from out on the sawmill and out on the farm when we ran flat belts on the, on the silage blower and on the, uh, on the feed grinder and all kinds of different things, you know. Like I tell you all the time, don't holler at me because I ain't going to listen to you anyway. I've been doing it too long, you know. Ain't got hurt yet. You can see this right here. It says Craftsman right on the front of it. And you can see somewhere Sears and Roebuck and Company. It's just a stick belt dressing. And you just uh, apply it to the belt. Friction pulls it off and sticks it on there and makes it stick.
See, now y'all can see the need for that bracket I made down there and also those, those farm pins driven into the ground and why it's built so heavily. And I think I'm going to touch the teeth up on that before I send this back to them, down to my son. So at any rate, I would consider this one somewhat of a success. A few little things got to dial in before it goes back down to my sons. That's all I'm going to do today is Track Man 44 and I am out of here.